Shalom and welcome back to Treasures of the Torah. I'm Pastor Matt McEwen, and this week our Torah portion is Balak. Now, I want to give a special shout out to a dear friend of mine and partner in ministry in Shuvu Yeladim, Noah Shapira. This is his bar mitzvah portion, and it was the inspiration for his recording studio that he has in his home called Talking Donkey Studios. Of course, in this Torah portion, we remember Bilam and his talking donkey, but I want to look at something a bit different this year in this Torah cycle, and that is the name of Balak himself. Now, this is the king that hires Bilam to curse Israel. Now, this brings up an interesting question. If this is such an evil man, and we know how important names are in the Bible, why does he get to have the Torah portion named after him? Well, let us look at some commentary that the Lubavitcher Rebbe brings down to us, and here's what it says about the name Balak. The Talmud forbids one to name one's child after a wicked person. Quoting the verse from Proverbs 10.7, the name of the wicked shall rot. Yet an entire section of the Torah is named after Balak, king of Moab, to whom the Midrash accords the title, who hated the Jewish people, most all of their enemies. For Balak is the parasha of the future, where evil is transformed to good and curses emerge as blessings. That's exactly what happened. Balak hires Bilam to curse the Jewish people, but as he opens his mouth to bring curses, a blessing comes out. And this is, of course, where we get the matovu. This is so wonderful. It's the only reason why an evil man gets a Torah portion uh, named after him, because this is that topsy-turvy, this backward uh, economy that God has, where the last are first, and the least are the greatest, and curses turn into blessing. And so this portion, Balak, is a parasha of the future, where evil is transformed to good and curses emerge as blessings. It is in Balak that the most beautiful verses describing the uniqueness of Israel and the speciality of their relationship with the Almighty issue from the vile mouth of Bilam, summoned by Balak to curse the Jewish people. And it is in Balak that the most explicit reference to the era of Moshiach in the five books of Moses is found in the form of a prophecy by the self-same Bilam. Let, Mo let Moses who loves them rebuke them, said God, when the people of Israel needed rebuke, for rebuke from a loving heart is many times more effective. And let Bilam, who hates them, bless them, God said, for the blessing of an enemy is so much more real than a lover's praises. In the parasha of Balak, we enter a Moshiach-like world, a, a, a Moshiach-like existence. A world of the greater wisdom that comes from folly and the greater light that comes from darkness, as is brought down in Ecclesiastes 2.13. This is a wonderful commentary from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and I'll tell you why it means so much to me. So many times in this world, it seems like things are unfair. Things are backward from how they should be. But the opposite is also true that Hashem has his own backward way of doing things. Let the curses be blessings. And let this person who wants to curse Israel and is being paid to curse Israel bring on a prophecy of Moshiach, of the Messiah. And so this is a beautiful statement, I think, that a rebuke from a loving heart is more effective. I think we can say that that is true in our own lives from from our parents, from our leaders, from our rabbis and pastors. A rebuke from a loving person is, is more effective. And the blessing from an enemy is much more real than a lover's praises. I love that. How much more would it mean if someone who does not like you, if someone like that gave you uh, a compliment or blessed you in some way? This is the kind of God that we have. Things are not always as they seem. And sometimes the people who have been downtrodden become the champions. I hope this has been a blessing to you this week. And we are praying for you and your family 
for this Shabbat. We pray that you will have rest and gifts from the Lord, all the good things. If you'd like to study with me in the yeshiva where I study, it is called Yeshivat Shuvu, and you could go there and visit shuvu.tv, fill out an application, and join us. Thank you so much for being with me. Shabbat Shalom.